Hey guys, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. I wanted to make a video answering some of the questions you've been asking me in my comments. I know it's been a while since I did a Q&A, so I wanted to sit down with you and just answer some questions. So I'll jump right into it. And these questions, I kind of pick the ones that stood out to me. I get a lot of questions all the time. Some I've already answered. And so I just kind of picked some of the good ones that I thought you guys would want to know. So. I'm gonna start with question number one. Someone asked about my educational experience, what I'm going to college for, what I'm getting a master's degree in, and what I would like to do with that degree after I get it. So for those of you who don't know, last year in May, 2018, I graduated with a bachelor's of science in human services. And for those of you who don't know what human services is, it's a very broad major. I actually had never heard of it, one of my counselors told me about it, and it's kind of like communications. Um, you can do many things with it, but the best definition I can come up with is it's a people helping profession. Um, you can go into mental health, you can work with gerontology, which are the elderly, you can, you can go into teaching, um, you can go into like substance abuse, like a parole officer. There's many different paths you can take with human services. And I actually looked up the definition of it on my laptop, which is right here. And I just want to read it to you because maybe I didn't give a good enough definition that you understood. But according to Google, the field of human services is a broadly defined one, uniquely approaching the objective of meeting human needs through an interdisciplinary knowledge base, focusing on prevention as well as remediation of problems and maintaining a commitment to improving the overall quality of life of service to other people. So basically helping improving other people's lives, which is what I wanna do. When I was in my undergrad, you had to pick a track in human services. So you could go into the substance abuse track, you can go into teaching, there was gerontology, mental health, which is the one I ended up going with because they said it was the most common one. And I'm actually glad I did that because now I'm in a master's program for counseling. So that was kind of the background on my bachelor's in human services. Uh, after I graduated last year, I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet, so I decided to try and continue my education because I just kind of needed more of a narrow path. I felt like going into a master's program, it would help me do that, and it has. So um, now I'm currently in graduate school for a master's in counseling, like I said, it's only my second semester, so I'm still pretty new, but it's definitely something that I wanna do and I'm passionate about. After my accident happened, I knew inside that whatever career or profession I went into in the future was that I wanted to help people. And I didn't know how I was gonna do that because of being paralyzed, being limited with my disability, how I was going to have a career that I could support myself on and help others or make a difference in people's lives. And so my last semester of undergrad, I took a class that pretty much changed my life and I thought um, I thought of counseling and going into that. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. Once I graduate from my master's program, um, at least right now, I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do. I'm sure by the time I graduate, which will probably take me about three or three and a half years, I'll know what I wanna do, but I, I don't know exactly what population I wanna work with, if I wanna become licensed or not after. So I'm still trying to figure all that out, but the plan is to graduate from this program and then find a job that I can just start helping others in any way I can. I'm, I'm pretty open to it right now, so we'll see what'll happen. But that's basically my educational experience right now. And I know someone else asked me, being in school and with my limited hand function, for those of you who are new or don't know my background story. Um, I'm a quadriplegic and I have no use of my wrist or hands. So no wrist or finger movement, which means I can't type. So I've been asked how do I type on my computer for my papers? And basically what I do is I know there's softwares out there such as Dragon that you can speak into, but I personally don't like it because for me sometimes I'll say something and realize it doesn't make sense and then I have to go back and edit my paper and delete it. And I, I, I find for me it's quicker if I could just type slowly. It takes longer, but I, I feel I can 
get it done easier for me. It's easier, I guess. So I have my laptop right here, and I'll try and show you how I type. Let's see. Ugh. So I don't know if you can see my laptop. What I do when I write my papers, and I've done this ever since my undergrad, my freshman year when I first had to write papers, is whenever I type, I use the back knuckle of my pinky finger on my left hand. I don't usually type with both hands, I usually just do one, and I will push letter by letter. So just like this. And that's how I type my papers. I know some people will be like, that's crazy, why do you do that? But for me, it's just, it's what I'm used to and it's what I feel most comfortable with. So maybe that'll change in the future, but for now, that's what I prefer to do. So I hope that answered that question pretty good. So another question someone asked me is how I am able to remain so positive and kind of just keep moving forward in life despite everything that I've been through and how I not let past negative experiences affect me. And I think this is a really good question and one that should be talked about. Um, and for me, I don't think there really is a right answer, I don't know. But I just do my best to continue to move forward in life. You know, I, when my injury first happened, I absolutely viewed it as a negative experience. It really changed my life and put a lot of limitations on myself and it was really hard. It wasn't easy. I know maybe for some people I, I make it look easy or I'm always so positive so people must think my life is perfect. Nobody's life is perfect. I definitely have struggles, but I do my best just to focus on the positive things in my life, just my future, what I have going for me. One of the things that helps me is I look back and, and just see where I was when I first started and then I look at where I'm now and see all the things that I've accomplished. Uh, the person that I've turned into because of this injury changed me for the better. My relationship with my family got better. I went to college. I would have not, I would have not gone to college if I was not in a wheelchair. No way, I was not planning on it. Um, definitely not, would have not gone to graduate school. And so, so many doors and opportunities have opened up because of this injury for me. And although I'm so paralyzed and it sucks, but I mean, it kind of is what it is for me. So giving up was never an option for me. And I just wanted to keep moving forward and I want to make a future for my life and live each day to the fullest. And I try to do my best to just take one day at a time. And that has really helped me um, just kind of deal with this injury. Also, even me sharing my story has really helped me see the the positive experiences that have that have come from it, even though it may be looked at as a negative experience. So I hope that answered that question. Another question was um, someone asked me about my future goals. And for me right now, my biggest goal is to finish school, which I kind of already talked about, just kind of what I want for my future. And I would love to, once I find a stable career, I want to buy a house, um, I want to start a family, get married, all those great things. So, but right now, I'm just trying to take one step at a time to reach that. Um, currently, I am living with my girlfriend right now. We have our own apartment together. She does my care part-time, and I also have a caregiver that does it the other part, which you've seen him in my previous video if you watched that. But yeah, it, it's really awesome to finally get my freedom and independence. I was the type of kid that would have moved out the day of my 18th birthday. I was very independent, I liked doing things on my own, and so obviously when my accident happened, that changed, and it took till I was 24 years old to officially move out on my own. And so I'm just enjoying it. My girlfriend and I are enjoying it. Bree and I love having a place to ourselves. so it really is amazing, and I'm trying to just appreciate the moment, live in the present. I feel like a lot of people either focus on the past or they're so worried about their future that they don't really just take a deep breath and live in the present and appreciate everything that's happening, if that makes sense. So yeah, right now I'm just trying to take one step at a time, but I'm still moving forward. It's awesome. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there as long as you keep moving forward. So the next question, someone asked me if 
I have ever thought about Botox and I have never tried it personally. I've heard a lot of great things about it and I know other people who are paralyzed that get uh, Botox on their bladder and it helps them go to the bathroom easier and it's not really something I have thought a whole lot about. For the most part, my routine and what I do right now it works for me and I haven't had any complications or problems so I kind of just like to stick with what works for me. I am a little nervous to try certain new things because I'm afraid of maybe trying something and it actually sets me back two steps. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but yeah, I've never had it. I mean, if in the future, if I end up needing it for some reason, I'm definitely open to trying it, but for now I don't feel like I really need it. So I'm kind of just gonna keep doing what I've been doing. And then uh, another person asked me if I've had surgery on my spine and when I first broke my neck, I did have surgery on my spinal cord. They did surgery in the front right here, which I don't know if you can see the scar, but they went in the front and the back of my neck and fused together my vertebrae. They pulled out all the, the broken bones. When I first broke my neck, I shattered my C4 vertebrae. So they had to pull out the broken pieces of bones and put in a donor uh, neck bone. And um, the doctor said it fit perfectly, so that's awesome. But yeah, they went through the front and the back, and if this front one, it keloided, and what that means is it kind of just um, swelled up with scar tissue, so it's a lot bigger than what it should be. But I haven't had surgery since my accident happened to me eight years ago. I haven't been hospitalized for anything serious, or I haven't even gone to the hospital at all since my injury happened. So I'm very lucky and grateful for that because I know a lot of other people with spinal cord injuries have a lot of complications just with daily life and their body. So I'm very lucky that I don't have to deal with many hospital visits. So this will be the last question. And it is, someone asks me, doesn't a quadriplegic mean a person is paralyzed from their neck down? And they notice that I have arm function. So they were questioning me being a quadriplegic, which is okay because that's basically what Google tells you if you look it up or um, hear it from someone else. A quadriplegic means you're technically paralyzed from your neck down, and a paraplegic means you're paralyzed from the waist down. And that's a black and white version, and there is a gray area that's not talked about. So I am diagnosed as a quadriplegic because. Although I can move my arms, I don't have any wrist or finger function. So like I can't make my wrist go up like that. Um, and if I have it this way, I can't bend my wrist back towards me. I have no finger function. I have limited core strength and my arms, I can move them, but I can't, I can't straighten my arm above my head. So my upper body was affected a lot too. And so, and just because someone's a paraplegic doesn't mean they have full upper body and only their legs are paralyzed. So there is a gray area between that and it is probably confusing for some people. So yeah, but I am, I personally am a quadriplegic and so I hope that answered that question. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I did want to say I am currently trying to raise money to purchase a Hoyer lift for Brie. Just uh, the times when her back is not doing good and we have, we want to get a lift that can help transfer me into bed so she doesn't always have to do it. Um, also for my caregivers too, it's, it's a lot of work to transfer me. So I started a GoFundMe to help raise money for me to purchase one. If you guys are able to donate, I would really appreciate that. If you can't, that's okay. Um, maybe if you could just share it, that would be awesome. I will leave a link to it in the description below. Again, I just wanna say thank you for your guys' continued support. I really appreciate it. Um, I love making videos for you guys and answering your questions and just spreading awareness on spinal cord injuries. That's the whole reason I started my YouTube channel is just because I felt like there wasn't enough awareness out there on spinal cord injuries because it's such a small community. But yeah, thanks again, guys. I will see you all in my next video.